Well, as we edge closer and closer to the BRICS summit is set to kick off next week, we turn our attention now to a matter set to be, like you see there, on the agenda when the leaders of the bloc meet. The discussion about the possible expansion of BRICS. Now, there's been interest from countries like Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and even Egypt to join the bloc. But what would these, um, what would including these countries mean for the influence that BRICS then has on a global scale? And do all the current members benefit from this possible expansion? Well, to answer those questions, we are jo now joined uh, via uh, Teams by Professor John Stremlau, who is Honorary Professor of International Relations at Wits University. Prof, a good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, a little bit earlier, we played that package just a few moments ago of the extensive list of countries that are looking to join uh, BRICS. I mentioned Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Nigeria, Senegal. Um, what do you think? What's the first thought from you when you talk, when you see this ex possible expansion from BRICS. Is this the beginning of a shifting geopolitical power play? Well, it may be, but it's uh, early innings in this uh, in this macro game of uh, of global uh, geopolitics. And I don't don't think that we're going to get very far in the uh, in the three days that uh, they meet next week, starting a week from today, uh, and uh, exempt. Uh, example on this is uh, Zimbabwe would like very much to to join, but uh, it's uh, got its election on Wednesday of next week, and so uh, one one really wonders how they will have a uh, an ability without a secretariat, without an organizational structure. It's like the G7; it's an informal uh, talk fest to uh, decide on on such complicated questions as who would be added to the to the list of uh, participants uh, the full members uh, uh, Naladi Pandor has talked about um, Rick's outreach as a sort of a secondary waiting room um, process of consultation and and South Africa is hosting the first Rick's in person meeting since the covid crisis and it's inviting everybody, uh, 67 uh, countries plus 20 uh, public officials like the UN Secretary General. So it's, it's going to be quite a uh, confab. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about what the benefits are, though, if we are to see that expansion actually see some sort of fruition beyond some of the challenges that you've mentioned here, Prof, which I think are notable. Um, we've watched over the past year or so Russia really going about this um, effort of trying to show this non-isolation uh, that it wants to show the world. And then even in that package, you hear countries like Iran speaking out against um, uh, s sanctions that have been imposed on some countries. And there's a sense the BRICS becomes, um, I suppose, the place to go for countries that feel that they have been excluded by the global community? Well, it may be the place to go, but they've got to get uh, the keys to unlock the kingdom. And that, that is a, a bit of elusive. Uh, the, 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 the word on the street is that uh, 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 Brazil and India are not enthusiastic about expansion. China very much is enthusiastic about expansion, as is South Africa. But uh, South Africa is a tiny, tiny member of BRICS, only barely 2% of the economy mm. and 2% or less than that of, of the population. And so who would be the uh, likely uh, expandee? Uh, I Indonesia is a big uh, southern country with uh, democracy, uh, and, and yet uh, uh, China and Russia are autocracies, and, and Brazil and uh, India and uh, South Africa are democracies. How do you draw the line? It really is a, uh, a, a, a contest between the United States and China, I suppose, and uh, it's interesting, I heard the um, former Nigerian Foreign Minister Bolaji uh, Akinyemi uh, say that he was advised the Nigerian government not to join BRICS because it was anti-American. So, who knows? Yeah, your line is cutting off a bit there, Prof, but I want to continue because this is an important discussion and if it gets too bad, then we'll abandon it. But you talk about Nigeria and I think that's, it leads me to this question now. Um, is there something to be said about even if we do see the expansion of BRICS, there's, there's going to be somewhat of a tug of war where the 
I suppose the, the, the political and economic hierarchy uh, then starts to set itself up within the bloc. Um, you talk about Brazil and India not being too keen on the expansion of BRICS. I mean, how much of that has to do with the power struggles of really who, who runs the reins, especially when you consider countries like Saudi Arabia that have massive economic power? <laughs> well, well, you've 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 outlined the problem, and mm. and uh, it's not going to be resolved mm. in three days next week. What I don't want to lose sight of is the fact that uh, there is a raging war going on, and China can, and through the BRICS, uh, with South Africa's help and others, uh, put pressure on Putin to get a peaceful resolution, and maybe quietly have some discussions with the Western powers that seem to uh, hold the keys to Zelensky and the Ukrainians, and maybe we can get a peaceful resolution of the one hot war that is really disturbing the international uh, uh, body politic these days, which is the Ukraine uh, colonial war that the uh, Russians uh, launched uh, in 2022. Mm. Yeah, if we if we if we sit a little bit with uh, what's happening here back home, I mean, we have a president here in South Africa, and we are a country that is essentially walking the tightrope in the very war that you've just mentioned there, Prof, um, and and really trying to balance relationships on either side of these tensions. Were we to see the expansion of BRICS, what would that mean for South Africa's very own international relations? Where in the past few uh, months we've talked about possibly losing the AGOA agreement. Well, again, this this speaks to the question of who would be part of the BRICS expansion. Yeah. They uh, added uh, South Africa as the only country uh, in addition to the to the big emerging markets, which are the four BRIC countries. Uh, they 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 really. I've written about uh, the big emerging markets, and they they are transforming, and they have grievances about the international financial institutions which have been Western dominated, uh, the Security Council of the UN needs to be reformed. I mean, everywhere you look, there is a percolating um, forces that uh, are, are trying to transform the geopolitical environment. But how is that done? And uh, that's why I keep coming back to the hot war that's, uh, the colonial war that the British, that the, uh, uh, Russians are perpetrating against Ukraine, uh, that, that ought to be resolved. And I think South Africa is working very hard to do so. And that's a priority. Uh, BRICS expansion uh, will drive everyone crazy, I believe. And that's symptomatic of uh, the Landy Pandora's inviting 67 uh, uh, countries. Uh, they're very mixed bag. Of, of countries with their own national agendas. And I don't think you're going to get an easy consensus among the five BRIC countries as to who will be added as a member. Yeah. Is there a concern in your view, perhaps from Western countries, when we start to see particularly countries like the USA, and I perhaps focus on the USA rather just to be more focused, um, for when we talk about this expansion, right, and we start to see countries like Saudi Arabia wanting to join in, considering the oil uh, prospects that uh, would come with a relationship with Saudi Arabia, for instance? <laughs> well, the, the, uh, the problem is that you're not going to have a... Um, uh, an agreement uh, easily. And I thought Victoria Newland, the uh, acting um, Deputy Secretary of State when she was here in South Africa recently, made it very plain that America is kind of relaxed about this whole question. We haven't even talked about the alternative of a of a, con of a currency uh, uh, for, for BRICS mm. nations that uh, I know the Chinese mm. have been uh, supporting um, uh, the, uh, the alternative, the, the yuan. But uh, uh, it, it, China is the, the, the largest or the second largest economy of the world, and, uh, and India is the biggest, most populous country of the world. And they will have uh, important stakes uh, going forward, and everyone knows that. But I don't think the BRICS is the vehicle for uh, deciding these issues. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious yeah. about what the relationship between organizations and structures like the G7, for instance, would look like with BRICS and, and, and how that relationship is managed moving forward as BRICS talks about expansion. 
Well, I think that, that we have a, a real priority to focus on globalization and the, uh, the dangers of uh, an escalating tensions between China and uh, the United States. And, and that, that is worth quiet diplomacy for sure, but it's not going to be, we still are a world of nation states and, uh, and power does count for something. And unfortunately, South Africa, who is the host of the BRICS, is really a tiny player mm -hmm. relative to uh, the, the uh, size of, of uh, China and the United States. But on the other hand, it can be a voice for reason, as Mandela proved um, uh, so brilliantly during the transition here. And to recapture some of that soft power is a, a, a challenge facing the South African people, not uh, foreigners. Yeah, an interesting point there. The challenge of South Africa uh, regaining its soft power. Prof, I'm going to leave it there. I imagine that as we get into uh, the summit, we'll be chatting a lot more uh, as we see what comes out of the BRICS summit when it kicks off. Thank you so much for giving us your time. We always appreciate it. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Good. Bye. That's uh, Professor John Stremler. Of course, he's Honorary Professor of International Relations at Wits University.